Documentaries follow a specific set of codes and conventions in order to be successful. There are seven key topics that fall under these codes and conventions. Camera work, observational footage, archive material, mise-en-scene, graphics, sound and editing. The camera work of a documentary is important as it's what keeps the audience intrigued. Interviews and documentaries usually all follow the same codes and conventions. This includes the rule of thirds, meaning that if you divide the screen up into three each way, the subject should be positioned to the left or right of the screen in that third. Their eye level should be a third of the way down the screen like this. There is no direct address from the subject to the camera as the subject's body is often tilted to the opposite side that they are positioned at, as if they are looking at and talking to the interviewer. Interviews are usually shot in a close-up or medium close-up so that the audience is able to view the interviewee's expressions clearly. The light source is always in front of the subject so that they are highlighted so that all the focus is on them. With observational footage, a lot of it is usually done handheld, as this is quicker and more efficient for the camera crew to capture a key moment for the documentary. A variety of shot types and sizes are used to ensure that this is visually interesting for the audience to keep them engaged. Establishing shots are often used to show a location. This is always relevant to the topic and gives you as an idea on what the places the narrator or interviewee are talking about. A lot of, but not all, documentaries use archive material to show snippets from the past, illustrate what a person is saying or to interest the audience. Often, archive material is displayed in still images, but there is still camera movement which tints, tilts or moves across the image so that it is still visually entertaining for the audience. Chroma key is the term used when archive material is used as the background, which is sometimes used in documentaries. Mise-en-scene plays a huge part in conveying a theme in documentaries. The mise-en-scene, whether it be clothing, background, locations, etc., are always relevant to the topic or what the interviewee is saying. We often see the mise-en-scene in observational footage or in the background of interviews. Graphics are often used in documentaries to give extra information to the reader. We usually see graphics at the beginning and end of a documentary to display the title and the credits. In interviews, we see the person's name and relevance in plain and simple fonts to avoid drawing attention away from the subject. The person's name is usually bigger than their relevance. This anchors the person's relevance to the topic. Sound plays a huge part in documentaries. The key sound in documentaries is the non-diegetic voice of God style narration, which is usually spoken in standard English in a formal and authoritative tone. This holds the documentary together whilst also linking topics together, providing exposition and giving facts and statistics. Non-diegetic music is often a key feature in documentaries as it is always relevant to the topic and helps create an atmosphere for the audience. The key diegetic sounds that can be heard usually come from the observational footage and interviews. Within documentaries, editing is important as it helps keep the audience intrigued and can also help convey a theme. Usually the editing in documentaries follows a steady pace and is in a plain and simple way so that it doesn't distract away from the actual content. In interviews, the questions asked by the interviewer are usually edited out so that it appears like what the interviewee is talking about is done freely. The jump cuts created by these edits are usually covered up with cutaways which is small clips of observational footage that is relevant to what the subject is talking about. This helps create flow and makes it interesting for the audience to watch. In cutaways, dissolves are popular as it helps the documentary flow smoothly. Sometimes montages of images and archive material can be used to show lots of information at once, but in a unique way that interests viewers. In interviews, expert interviewers are used to ensure they ask the right questions and get a good amount of information for the documentary. Sometimes we see short, quick interviews or of simple questions asked to the public in documentaries, which gives an insight to the general public's opinion. This is called Vox Pops. Lastly, documentaries follow a narrative structure. This can be open or closed, depending on how the documentary ends. If there are still unanswered questions and a future to the topic, it would be left open. However, if there isn't much else to explore within the topic and all questions a viewer may have have been answered, then it would be closed. There, are, there is single-stranded or multi-stranded. This is based on the topic of the documentary. If it's based on one key topic, then it would be single-stranded. However, if the, docu if the focus is on more than one topic, then it would be multi-stranded. 
There is linear or non-linear. If the documentary is chronological or non-chronological, then that's what determines it, that. If the narrative is pre presented in smaller topics around the main topic, this would be called segmented, and circular is when the documentary starts in the same place as it finishes, so it goes in a circle.